So, I've been working on this Mario Maker-like platforming game for the Playdate, where you build levels using a level editor and share them, but I ran into a problem. The Playdate doesn't have a networking API, so you can't share levels over Wi-Fi. To solve that, I ended up building this website that encodes the level data into Morse code, which you can then play from your phone. Then, by using the microphone on the Playdate, the game listens to the code and turns it back to level data, so you can share your levels by just sharing the website link. This week, I wanted to improve the look of the website, since it currently looks like this. However, there's one small issue though, which is I don't have much experience making website frontends. That's quite ironic given that I'm employed as a full-time web developer, but it's just because I happen to do back-end development mostly. However, it looks like I finally need to learn how to center a div. First step was to make a mockup for a website, so I hopped onto Figma, which is a popular design software. It also sounds like a great setup to a D's nuts job. I'm no designer by any means, so I just did the best that I could and threw together a really simple design. Of course, I made it dark mode themed, because I'm sane and rational. Using what knowledge I had though, I was able to cobble together this simple prototype. I ran into an issue however, which I knew I had to deal with eventually. Something that all modern web developers have to think about. Responsive web design. Responsive web design is when your website changes and scales to each device that it's on. So, since this website is mainly meant to be used on a mobile device, I needed to figure it out. I am a software engineer though, so it shouldn't be too bad. So that was horrible, but it did make a new friend, which is the Flexbox. Now, the website is somewhat responsive and doesn't look terrible on the phone. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. I wanted to add a progress bar to show how much of the level has been transmitted. So I found this library called Loading Bar JS that creates an SVG loading bar for you. I changed the style to match the design I made and tested it out, and it seemed to be working pretty well. In my old website, I had a button that allowed you to cancel the beeping, so the next step was to bring it back to this website. I wanted to animate the buttons in and out, so I first looked online to see if I can find something to help me. There's a CSS animation library that seemed pretty good, so I plopped it into my project and used it to animate between the transfer and cancel buttons. I liked how it turned out, so I got started on my next task. Currently, there's no way to change the level code that's being sent. In the old site, I had a text box to type in the code, but that was just for testing. I needed the code to be passed in as part of the URL, so I added a query string parameter. You can see that if I change the text in the query string, it updates the level code on the page. This ties directly into the next task, which is to generate a QR code on the Playdate that links to the website with the level code as a query string parameter. The Playdate SDK has a QR code API, so I can use that to generate the code for me. On the Playdate, I added a menu option that brings you to a new scene which starts creating the QR code for that level that you have selected. Unfortunately, it kind of takes a while to create the QR, so I added a loading prompt. Eventually, I'll cache the QR image so it doesn't have to regenerate it every time. When I scan it, it works. There's still some issues, like for some reason the website crashes on iPhones, and I still need to make a way to import the code as a level on the Playdate, but I'll be addressing those next time. See you next week.